we want to start by telling you that the meeting is being recorded. We have to say that every week for some reason. I don't know why, but we do. Um, and we want to take a moment at the beginning to appreciate our uh, servicemen and women serving in Afghanistan. I want to remind everybody that on Monday, May 26th, uh, we want to invite everyone, friends and neighbors to join us in the Memorial Day Parade and exercises that begin at uh, 945. And we're starting uh, this evening with Julia Steger, uh, Girl Scout, discussing proposed Gold Award project. Julia, thank you for coming. I'm here to ask all of you if there's anywhere in the town I can put, as you can see in your um, folders, there's one handout that has a picture of a pod. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the Cradles to Crayons. It's promoting these kind of things so that towns can be more, um, can participate more in Cradles to Crayons because right now they only have one, um, like big flagship uh, place mm -hmm. and it's all the way in Boston mm -hmm. so it's very hard for people to go in with donations and if there's something like this here in Medfield it will be easier for people when they have donations to just go right somewhere in Medfield and drop it off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, their main goal for Cradles to Crayons is they like to give clothes that are gently used so the kids feel that they're getting something new and it's not just like they're getting a hand-me-down that's mm -hmm. because they can't afford new clothes. Mm -hmm. um, their motto is to connect kids who need with kids who have. Mm -hmm. So it's a very kid-to-kid um, -kid kind of thing. They have a very personal connection with the kids and the social workers. Mm -hmm. So that's what separates them from other organizations that accept donations. So some of my ideas of where I could put the pod were mm -hmm. any of the school's um, mm -hmm. properties, okay. like um, Memorial or Wheelock. Mm -hmm. in, it can go on grass. It can go in a parking lot. Anything that's convenient for people to drop mm -hmm. off donations. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. So it looks like it's like eight, eight by sixteen, right? Yeah. So good. Yep. And there's a, so there's a is there like a bin or something or, or yeah, something there's a um, code on it. Yep. And um, you just punch in the code and it opens up and then you can put your donations oh. in there. How do you know the code? How does they what one of my things would be is to make a flyer and put that out in the at most of the schools they have like a weekly email on Thursdays mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that would go in the weekly email so that to remind people to bring donations and that would have the code on it oh, so that people excellent. could go excellent. and donate their stuff. Okay, excellent. And, and how long would you want to keep it there? Um, I don't, I about a permanent. year. Yeah. For it, about it would, a year. It would, if, the t if it was adopted by the town, it could become a permanent, permanent. A permanent so, place, yeah. okay. But okay. top, for at least a year. Yeah, see how it goes and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So had you thought of other places other than the schools, or was that the schools the places there you thought was, it should be? There was um, a couple, like, uh, business complex, like mm -hmm. Will's, um, or the Papa Gino's uh, mm -hmm. shopping complex. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was pretty, yeah, oh, the yeah. Legion. Oh, the Legion, stuff like that, yeah. Space over there. Oh. If we couldn't figure out with the school systems. Um, I'm Catherine. I'm I know, yes, I know, yeah. As I said, I'm Catherine Steger, uh, Julia's mom. I'm also the troop coordinator for the Older Scout Troop, mm -hmm. so I'm also here as the advisor, as the Gold Award yeah. Project um, advisor. Um, and one of the things we also looked at was the American Legion. Sure. Um, that has some good space, too. Yeah. Because yeah, it's just one park. It's just one parking space. So it's, it's just, just a question of finding. Correct, just and it can go on the grass, as um, Julia explained too. too. Okay. Uh, is it a location you'd want uh, a lot of visibility, or there'd be enough advertised that people after I would know where it would be? Do you want to answer that, Julia? Actually, cradles to crayons. They don't want too much visibility because they don't want it to be kind of somewhere that it just dumps. Like that's why they didn't really want it at the dump because they. Yes. Their clothes need to be in fairly good condition. They yep. just don't want old, like, dump. Yep. I see what you mean. So yep. they want it 
visible and so that people know about it, but they don't want it too visible yep. so that people just dump stuff in it. Got it. Got it. That's very good. I think that makes sense. Well, if you sense. put it at the transfer station next to the Goodwill, and you could say, good stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, they just didn't really, we offered that, and yeah. Cradle to Cranes just didn't really want that. Yeah. I, I'm I'm sure I don't know if you've got experience with that. I'm sure they found that that probably hasn't worked in the past. Like well, said. they yeah. have right now. They only actually have four of these pods established yeah. because they, this is a new initiative new yep. that they, as Julia has pointed out, they have this wonderful um, distribution center in Brighton, yeah. but it really is, it's hard to get to and sure. to, for people to bring in all these clothes all the time. So that way, if we can set up something here in Medfield, there is one in Dover. I think that's also, is that on the Yeah, hand, that's on one of the sheets. They mm -hmm. have a couple of established, okay. um, Hingham might be another one. So they really are looking to branch out into the communities to really connect, as Julia said. Did, did you think at all of the FAF Center? Yeah, I thought about that, but there's not a lot of parking it's and a lot of space, so yeah. it would be very difficult for, because yeah. a truck eventually has to come in and get uh, the stuff, okay. so it would be very hard for a truck to go in and come out. Yeah, and they already have a good bit of parking anyways. I think they leave a lot of, you know, some, a lot of their trucks are parked there, too, and yeah. all that. You're right, though, the parking lot is How about big. the center, the senior center? Uh, I'm, yeah, if that, that would be good. I'm just not sure if they have the space. Yeah. the willingness more yeah. so we yeah. weren't sure if that was a good possibility too yeah. because that would be a excellent it's over there by the as yeah uh, yeah by the um, athletic club if that yeah. would be possibly yeah because i would think places like the american legion and others would be a private mm -hmm. deal right that that would not be the town okay uh, but anything that's town property that, like the center the faf center um any of the schools are going to need school schools would go to the yeah. school committee so the school committee but a week or they would have jurisdiction on that yeah okay. yeah and the, uh, and we realized that it probably would be the school um and that's why julia just wanted to know if that was the next step as a backup she come here yeah. first and then go there do you refer it to them we weren't sure what yeah, the to do so well, appropriate they're, steps they're very were. independent of us and so that we don't refer stuff to them usually so that okay. you would just go there okay yeah. so we would go to the superintendent so, would yeah. be the best yeah, yeah. because the schools would be a good location just because the, the moms would be thinking about you know yeah. if they're driving and um, putting things unless there's another location that you all yeah. thought about with the town seems like that, that would probably work well I mean they certainly is enough parking there's a lot of different parking lots so you do have a lot of choices there with the different schools so I would assume that they can certainly give up one spot or else be on the grass or something okay. you would think. Okay. But, uh, yeah, and we looked at Wheelock too because that yeah. would be great because it, one of the other things Julia was thinking is if she could engage the school kids yeah. they, as classroom because one of the things Matt wants them to do, uh, excuse me, that um, Cradles wants them to do is to maintain it, make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, things yes. are not getting overcrowded yep. and yep. stuff is pushed um, to the back. Sort yeah. things so to that the back. people know that there's space to leave yeah, stuff. That's a good idea. Yeah, it isn't just a question. You just don't dump it there and then forget right. about it. Right. So thing. a class, if it was at the school, yeah. classrooms could adopt a week. Oh, that's a, month, a good idea. And they could oh, take excellent. the kids in. That's a very in, good and idea. And that would also connect. Excellent. That was Julia's other idea. And I'd idea. come in and talk to the kids about yeah what Cradle Scranton does. That's very, very good. It, yeah. Is it up to a certain age of, of um, donations? Is it they to help elementary or high school or everybody? Or I think they, they do help high up school. until high school. Through high school. High school. Yeah. But most of the need is that up through, if it says in, on the path, up through 12 years of age. Yeah. It's newborns through 12 is where the most need is. Um, and But they do do, again, the high school has always seemed to get forgotten so they do try to address that but they don't get as many donations for that what? Um, so that would be and then map would be another if she could tie mm. it in and have again they're always looking for great opportunities for the kids to volunteer oh. so in the if, afternoons in the it's afternoon it's really, so if it was yeah. at Wheelock yeah. the map kids from Wheelock we could yeah. talk to Gay Shannon and um, those. so the school would be great but again we weren't sure if we had to come here and okay, get your yeah. approval before we went to the yeah. school so that's why she wanted to good. Um, Chuck, uh, it. It's just what a great organization, what a great thing to do. How did you um, think of this or tie to them? Well, for Girl Scouts, we go there once a year, and I've always enjoyed going there because it's very cool. You get to, I've always been on outfits, so you pick out outfits, you have to sort them into sizes, you have to go through them to see if they have stains or rips. Um, yeah. So they don't accept those. They That actually goes to Goodwill. Okay. Um. And then they also accept toys in good condition, so you have to, 
one of the things you have to do is get all the toys and put them together in the right um, game. And you have to have every, all the pieces in the game. game yep, so that's yep. one of the things. It's a lot of work. Um, yeah. So they do accept not just clothes, but toys and books. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Good. And this great. has been a passion. Yeah, I've yeah, always loved excellent. going there because it's that's just... Great. Boy. And, and they only help 75,000 kids in Massachusetts when there's over 300,000 kids that need close. their stuff. Yeah. That's what uh, really struck me in the materials you sent us ahead of time was that only a, th a quarter of the kids are really getting the help that yeah. it's needed, unfortunately. So I think it's an excellent thing for you to be doing. I, I, I love the fact that you're bringing it to town this way on a more permanent basis. and. Uh, I think it's a great project. Unfortunately, of the things that you're, where you're looking to put it, we don't have any control over any okay. of them. So we can tell you that we think it's a great idea, but we can't really, uh, beyond that, we're, we can offer whatever assistance we can, but we don't really have any assistance to, to help you with. Okay. So there, there, and there isn't any other area that we're not thinking about that would be town property that you would consider would be possible? So. Uh, we just wanted to make sure we were Yeah, missing covered all the bases yeah. and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. You want to be at a highway garage? <laughs> <laughs> we can find a spot. And there. then the, uh, the whole police fire complex is, um, yeah. if, if goes to that town meeting, we'll be in sure disarray do, for a while. That was the other thing we it's thought of, too. Dark. But depending upon what yeah. happens, we didn't want to. Well, you don't would, want to be moving be a, it around. That would be a great location after it, the, the building is yes. built. If you, oh, if you find the things don't work well with the school, you or you find you want to change the app, because okay. I would think that. Yes, would be because nice. this would one of the gold, one of the things with the gold award, it has to have a legacy piece, so yep. that the legacy will be the pod. Yeah. Um, and also, do you want to just say one last thing about because oh, yeah. you might so want to ask them for support I'm on that? I'm a figure skater and I skate in Brighton, Mass. Yeah. And um, one of the things to end my project, I'm going to run a skating show to benefit, so it would be like $5 to come in the door and it would just benefit Cradles to Crayons. Mm -hmm. And, and we'd accept donations and stuff Excellent. like that. And then I'd also, in November, I want to do an event called Stuff the Truck where Cradles to Crayons comes and brings a truck and it's just a whole day of people bringing donations and they stuff the truck and then that goes to Brighton to be sorted. Oh, and you would do that here in Medfield. Yeah. So she's got three. Good. Wow. So Great. important maybe to let us know as those both those things come up to help us let us publicize that okay. for you, write it up meeting and yeah. stuff, right? And she's going to try to yeah. get, um, I think you're going to be at the booth at Medfield yeah, Day. Medfield. Oh, yeah, Medfield. Booth Once too. we get, Excellent. Yeah, and that's very good. Once we get good. the date, we think it's November 15th, we're just waiting for final approval on the stuff, the truck. Yeah. But that would also be another okay. thing she yeah. would be. Great. You know, it'd be great to get just yeah. the town behind exactly. for everybody to come exactly. out for that. That's very good. So. Well, I like that. I, I, I want to signs up for that stuff. The truck yeah. too. We, I, I we just want to thank you also just for being the active citizen that you are and your involvement in uh, in with Girl Scouts. It's just a very positive thing. So thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great Hi. idea. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you so much, Chris. You, you don't have any ideas for town-owned land, but. Uh, no, we're kind, of under, we're kind of under construction. Yeah. So, uh, no, I think, and I think a project like this is perfect for the school. So, should we go right to this? So, Julie, you can, Julie can contact the um, superintendent. superintendent. Yep. Yeah. He'll put you on the agenda for the school committee. Okay. Right. And is that coming up? Is there another one coming up? Coming up that for the no. No, they, they still continue to meet monthly, even in the summer. Okay. So. Yeah. Right. Okay, That's fine. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice. So Good Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. And uh, next, we're going to hear from Sue Buckley, member of the Plastic Bag Study Committee. Promote bag it video that will be shown at the library Tuesday, May 27. <laughs> That's a great plug. Um, going back to the Girl Scouts, there is a bin at the Medfield. I'm trying to think of the name of the dry cleaner, the green cleaner, okay. um, right along the, uh, near Shaw's, yep. um, and they accept, I mean, she's only got a, a bin, so she does accept really new clothes. I've gone to Cradles yeah. to Crayons quite a few times, and it's a great organization, so I, I could plug that <laughs> for yeah. a half an hour. Yeah. Is, is <laughs> um, the cleaner's uh, bin for Cradles to Crayons? It is for Cradles, oh, yeah, excellent. it says right on it, I, I believe it's oh. over to the right when so you go good, in the good, door. Good. And they are looking for new or newer clothing. Really, yeah, right. really, really Yeah, anything quality. that is stained or ripped, they, yeah. it, they do. They pass it right on to yeah. Uh, yeah, Red Cross or uh, Goodwill. Hmm. But getting back to plastic bags. Yes. Um, this is just a quick update as to what we've been doing for the last two and a half months. Um, at our initial meeting, it was generally agreed that we would um, 
uh, educate students on the use of plastic bags. And the student committee members uh, are all students of the environmental science class. And they um, thought that they had seen the um, Bagot movie in their classes, and they thought that would be a great way to uh, get more kids involved and uh, educated. Um, I had never seen it. And after viewing it, I thought, it's really not appropriate for younger children. We thought middle school and through high school would be great. So I did bring it to Nat Vaughn at the middle school, and he viewed it, and he kind of agreed with me. It would be a great thing for maybe seventh and eighth graders. They have an advisory program. I think they meet once a week. And he said for the next academic year that they would probably be able to incorporate it into oh, uh, the advisory yeah. committee meetings. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I talked to Robert Prager at the high school, and he gave it to a content specialist. Mm -hmm. And they're going to review it. The, right now, all the environmental classes see it, but as far as getting the general population of the high school to see it, um, he's going to see if he can work it in for the next academic year. And in keeping with the educational theme, Emily Monick, who uh, is one of the students, she suggested using the transfer station as a way to get out more information on recycling. And so we were there on April 5th, I believe it was, and um, handing out hundreds of flyers, yeah. which was actually quite encouraging. Um, but it was quite an education for me, standing there for several hours and finding out how many people don't, re don't recycle and how much they actually dump into the, uh, yeah. right into the building. Um, but we had made posters and plastered it with all of the things that can we be recycled and another one with stuff that cannot be recycled. And we did answer questions. Yeah. We had one negative feedback that did we realize we had held up traffic on one time. Oh, of course, yeah. I, yeah. You, well, yeah. you know, that was to be expected. <laughs> um, but we generally got a great positive uh, yeah. reaction from, from most people. Um, so I'm not quite, <laughs> a little bit disheartened at uh, some of the comments, but it, it should be a positive, it was a positive experience overall. And Emily has also written um, several articles for the local paper. Uh, the last one was on uh, the May 16th uh, issue. And it's promoting the screening of the Bagot movie, mm. which will be on the 27th, Tuesday the 27th, yeah. at the town library at 7 o'clock. Good. And we're going to, so. after the screening, we're going to answer some questions and just have a general discussion and um, see how it relates to Medfield. Good. Um, it, it is quite, after I saw the movie, I opened my refrigerator and I said, plastic, 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 yeah. plastic. And it's just, it yeah. really is eye-opening. It's quite an uh, enjoyable movie, actually, yeah. even if it's a teaching documentary, but it was quite interesting. Uh, Sienna Fitzpatrick has contacted some of the retail stores to find out what they do as far mm -hmm. as plastic versus paper. And yeah. um, Whole Foods in Patagonia got right back to her because they are environmentally they conscious companies. Yeah. and. Uh, so we've got to contact some more stores. Um, they'll be contacted in the future. Um, we have looked at legislation at the state level. There is a bill, H3438. Uh, it's called the Plastic Bag Reduction Act. But it really refer, uh, it's really for large companies. I mm -hmm. think over 4,000 employees. And I mean, it's really, um, it's aimed for either using paper bags or Bags that are co uh, compostable or marine degradable, mm -hmm. that variety. And um, right now we're, we're trying to see where it stands. It's been, it was in, it passed the Environment, Natural Resources and Agriculture Committee and it's now in the House Ways and Means. And I don't know how long it sits there. It's been there since last April. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It could probably be there for centuries. I know. So, um, and several of us have written and we're trying to find out and call and see what action is being taken but I would suggest you call the uh, state reps and ask them uh, ask them to get involved well yeah. ask them for uh, an opinion uh, their opinions as to what's whether it's really going to come out or not okay because right. they're the ones that know the uh, system in yeah. there the rest to the rest of it yeah. is like a puzzle palace right yeah so um, and in the future we're looking to contact some more towns some towns have placed bans or they've had fees hmm. um, Medfield is kind of we don't have we just have Shaw's and probably CVS that are the biggest producers or generators of the plastic bags and um, so many people shop in surrounding towns that you would have to rely on everybody kind of joining forces to have an effective plastic ban right but some people we met uh, on that at the transfer station were appalled that they don't want to see anything banned mm -hmm. um, they think it's their right to use whatever <laughs> bags they want um, and unfortunately, 
Eve Potts was not able to um, join our committee the very first week. She mm -hmm. said that she was kind of busy. And uh, David Stevenson has dropped out. His, uh, his work has changed, so he's in the evening, so he wasn't able to meet. So we're down to two adults. <laughs> yeah. And we would love to have uh, you know, a larger committee. The there students have been great. Um, but they're all seniors and they're all moving on. Yeah. So I just had two questions with that. Um, and I believe um, when we first, when you guys first came out to the selections meeting, um, the environmental science was going to try to work so that juniors coming in, there'd be a replacement. Do you know if there was any follow through on that? No, we've really got to touch base again. Uh, but we would, we'd love to have students, but ideally we'd love to have like two or three more adults. I, I put a, um, uh, Jeff Hyman is the uh, vice president of Midfield Green. And okay. I, I put a uh, email out to him uh, to see if, the, if he could bring that up, if there would be uh, any interest right. uh, in Midfield Green mm -hmm. uh, to also, um, you know, volunteer to be on the uh, Medfield Green day. has put a, are, are in the process of putting something down at the transfer station just for plastic bag mm -hmm. uh, recycling rather than oh, just good. using the one at Shaw's. So hopefully this will get it more in the, out in the open. I mean, if a lot of people don't bring their own bags to Shaw's, never mind the recycling ones. Um, so that's where we stand, but uh, we're showing the movie Bag It and on the 27th on Tuesday at 7. So that's hopefully we it. might get some adults that want to come and maybe even join the co committee that night. That's right, I've just seen that. Yeah. She, she raises a, a, an interesting point. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is there a way that um, we can figure, are there other committees in town that are also short of members? Right now, the Board of Health uh, is missing members, Downtown Study Committee, Plastic uh, Bag. Uh, so we're not that we alone. can then, <laughs> no, we can somehow advertise. Um, All the ones and then uh, put out a, a call to put out something uh, in the paper or uh, I don't know what other avenues we have maybe on uh, the website and maybe yep. patch or we can issue a press release asking for interested people to yeah know. that's a good can, idea can we figure out uh, what committees were short Chris sure. good I like that but I'll let you know if I get uh, an email response uh, through Midfield Green. Okay. Thank, right. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so for what you guys are doing. You're welcome to take it and take a okay. look at it. What it basically tells you is that we don't do a very good job of recycling in Midfield. Yeah. We're at the wrong end of the scale there, unfortunately, according to DEP. We have an appointment at uh, 745 with the Open Space and Recreation Planning Committee. And so why don't we uh, fill time until, they, until 745 with our other action items. Uh, first one is Council on Aging Director Roberta Lynch recently moved out of town. She is a member of the Housing Authority and Midfield State Hospital Advisory Committee and respectfully requests the selectman's consideration for her continuing on both boards. Oh, that's because uh, uh, if you don't live in town, you're not supposed to well, serve Well, the, the issue is that it's, there's actually two issues. One is the Housing Authority is an elected position, yep. uh, oh, which okay. I asked Mark Farrell about. And Mark... Um, so you have to be a resident for that yes. one. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the other one is the State Hospital Advisory Committee, and I think you've, you've kind of gone back and forth on your policy on that, whether or not you'll allow out of town residents to be on board, so. Yeah, a lot of times uh, if they have a, a connection to, to Medfield, like she does, by, mm -hmm. by being the, the director of the Council on Aging in town, we, we let people serve on, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. on boards. Um, I don't have a, do you have a strong feeling? No, and well, in the advisory committee, at least, it, at least the current iteration of it is one it's probably down anyway. Not continue so, very yeah, long anyway. Yeah, exactly. So. so I think it's kind of a moot point. But, but I, the um, council on aging. Yeah, I will. I will confirm with Mark, but I don't believe that you can allow um, Roberta to continue as the okay. elected uh, for the housing too. authority. So yeah, I wouldn't think so. Special uh, yep. Okay. That's because of state law or statute. Okay. Good. Some fellow named uh, Selectman DeSorgo wishes to discuss NSTAR proposal for landscaping in front of high tension lines on Route 27 and the traffic island at Pond View Avenue and High Street. Mr. DeSorgo. Well, I get two things. Uh, I'll give pass one down to Mark there. Oh, thank you. The um, NSTAR with the high tension lines uh, has been doing an, an incredible amount of work down there. What they're doing, I'm not always sure. There's it's all kinds of vehicles going in and out. A lot. I also noticed that they're putting towers, I take it they're cell towers, on a lot of the high tension lines by 27. But the concern I had um, is if you go through Hartford Street in Dover, um, they cleared all that area out, and then they replanted 
beautiful bushes and uh, shrubs and stuff back. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, if they can put beautiful bushes in Dover, why can't they do the same in Medfield? Yeah. So I met with uh, Jack Lopes and he said, sounds logical, let me check for you. Um, and I thought this was kind of interesting. Let me just read his response. It says, per our last meeting, you had asked about new plantings on NSTAR transmission lines along Route 27, the same type of plantings that were done in Dover on Hartford Street. I was finally able to get some information. The plantings were indeed done by NSTAR. So they, they paid for it and they planted as a favor to a budding residence since their driveways go under the transmission lines. Um, however, the residents on the edge of the right-of-way are responsible for uh, its maintenance, i.e. water, pruning, et cetera, mm -hmm. of the plants and shrubs and trees that um, they put in. And they have taken full ownership. So if a plant dies, they are responsible for the replacement. If this is something that the town of Midfield would like to investigate, please let me know and we can work out details. So it sounds like NSTAR will pay for the shrubs and plants that go in. Because when you drive down Route 27, you look in, yeah. it looks barren. I mean, it looks awful. Like um, and they will put uh, shrubs along both sides of uh, Route 27. In, in Dover, there's a budding neighbors right there. So apparently, they have taken over. There's not a lot of abutters down on 27. There's a few. So I don't know if this is something that Med, if, if they planted, if Medfield would be in agreement to um, replace if they died or water, or if this is this going to be a, um, too much of a, an issue for us to keep those alive? Or um, it looks like a good deal. I don't know if some neighbors in that area would be willing to help out. Uh, I don't know how much watering you would have to do. Uh, whether uh, I think we have a water truck, correct? Uh, I don't no. know. I think so. No. I, I thought we did. An attachment. They. I've seen the hi highway go around. No. No. So Winchester does. No. Yeah, I know. I was going to say somebody tells me about that all the time. Yeah. yeah. But from the audience, really the nice suggestion is a fire truck, and, and and certainly they carry water. There's something we have that does water. It's not a fire truck. Well. But if, but if we don't have we, we can one. talk to Ken about it. That's okay. I mean, I know I suggested. Uh, nice I suggested. Nice spray the aerial spray. I suggested. Uh, uh, Back of a uh, highway truck? Yes. Okay. I know that I had mentioned at, at one of our meetings about uh, maybe getting some sort of capability of watering to help out the garden club with their various plantings, and, and Mike was very dismissive of it, I remember at the time. Well, what, the budget what, next year, uh, what, water what's truck. your thoughts on, um, on this? Well, I think it's a great idea. I think that uh, we should take them up on it. Uh, we just need to figure out how we're going to keep the uh, things alive, and, that, and that's mainly going to be the watering, I think. Yeah, it's a big, it's big area. So I think, yeah, I mean, we should take a shot. We should at least give it a shot. And hopefully, I wouldn't count that the water will be probably as good as it should be. But maybe with a little bit of luck, nature will take care of the, the plants and stuff it, like that. It, it because, probably, you know. The watering should just be a, a, a year or two's. Yeah, once you get them going. Because once, yeah, once they get established, they should be able to go on their own if you plant the right things. Sure, just a question of getting someone to be able to do all that. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. It's a, it's a big area. I think if NSTAR is willing to do it, we can work with Ken about coming up with a maintenance plan for it. Um, Town-wise, as opposed to trying to contact residents in that I think area, it's probably, probably be too in much. That area, that it would be the town. It's a pretty big area. Yeah. I just think, I mean, if they're going to pay for it, and it really would beautify that area. Right now, it looks yeah. terrible. No, I think it's a good idea. That's good. So should um, you want me to get back to um, back to, to Mr. Lopes and um, yeah. and, and yeah. go forward? Yeah. And then I'll come back. When you when you get in touch with them, ask them what they're doing along that whole line because it is an incredible amount of work. Trucks are in and out of there left and right. They've actually made a road now going in, um, but there's a lot of vehicle traffic yeah. that's going in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for doing that, Richard. And the the second part of that, uh, I just wanted to on the area of um, um, the traffic island on Pond View and High Street. I just wanted to thank Ken and the uh, DPW. Uh, we did check it out uh, and thank Sarah also uh, that it is indeed town property. There is no uh, association um, that was responsible for that and it is in a town layout. And the highway went down, they did a nice job. They blew the leaves out 
and put some mulch in there, as they do in the other uh, traffic islands. So, uh, and I, I just wanted to also kind of give a plug for the, uh, the mini town halls, because that's an issue that came up in the mini town halls. And the mini town halls is the selectmen meet uh, each month, I think, uh, Mark? Uh, yeah, next uh, week. On the Metacomet area, and then Pete, you're down in the Alder Juniper Clock area, correct, in uh, June? Alder, yes. Yep. Um, yep. And it's just a good way. I, I June 12, I think, Richard. I think it's working well. And here's just an example that the neighbors down in the Stewart Pondview area, you know, had some concerns with that. Can the town help out? And the town was able to come through. Just shows a little bit that government does indeed work here. Um, so I just a plug and a thanks to Ken and the G DPW for doing that. Thanks for following through on both of those things, Richard. Uh, Licenses and permits. Memo requests permission to place signs advertising Discover Midfield Day on June 14, 2014. It's actually Midfield History Day. Yeah, I was stumbling over that. Midfield History Day on June 14, where you get to listen to Selectman Sorgan <laughs> babble what's about going on in the it. past in Midfield as you drive around and see it. Um, I, uh, I move we allow memo to uh, so place the signs. Um, I'll second that. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. Uh, next, uh, Cheryl O'Malley, president of the Friends of the Dwight Derby House, requests permission for a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for third Thursday concerts, uh, May 22nd, June 19, September 19, and October 19, 16. Also request permission to place signs promoting these events in addition to a sign promoting Father's Day sale on June 14 at the Dwight Derby House and Medfield Day on September 20. My goodness, they got their six month calendar going here. <laughs> uh, so moved. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. J just a little plug there. Um, they're following with the Thursdays, but they're moving it to the third Thursdays because I always found you have a number of things going on that first Thursday. You can't go to all of them. Uh, Billy Pope, the Zool Gallery, does a great job on the first Thursdays. Now they're moving it to the third, so you'll be able to do both. Great idea. Uh, resident Colleen Sullivan requests permission on behalf of the St. Edwards Golf Tournament Committee to place signs promoting the upcoming golf tournament. Signs in place June 7 to 22. So moved. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Yep. Pending. Uh, mission statement and appointment of hospital committee. Uh, well, we're just doing that next week, aren't we? Or are we doing that? The, the State Hospital Advisory Committee is coming in next week, so I think it's probably a good idea to hold that discussion until know. next week. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Although I think that. Richard had a couple yeah, of... Yeah, Mr. Things. Chairman, I just had, uh, and you can look it over between now, uh, I actually had an email, uh, and I thought it was an interesting um, concept. Um, rather than, the email is talking about rather than people sending in resumes, which they certainly can. Um, for example, uh, on the state level, the federal level, um, if a committee's being formed uh, or someone's going to be appointed, uh, a lot of times the board will go out and ask that person because they know they have a lot of the qualities and skills that are needed uh, and ask them if they'd be willing to serve their town by doing that. And because otherwise some of these people might not send in a resume, mm -hmm. but if mm -hmm. asked by the town, mm -hmm. because we know they have valuable skills that really can be of great benefit to the community, uh, if we ask them, a lot of times I think they would serve. So I just thought this, rather than just take what resumes we have, I, I just think it'd be a good idea for us to look around the community, uh, people that are on, that have served the community in the past or have special skills in the private business or other mm -hmm. that we know about and approach them if, if as a board we feel you know, they could be a real positive uh, force on that board and ask them if they'd be willing to serve mm -hmm. and not just limit it to the resumes. So uh, why don't we uh, ask uh, uh, Christine maybe and Mike to put together the list of all of the names so far and maybe come up with some other names that mm -hmm. you guys can think of. And maybe we can do the if same. we have suggestions, yeah. we'll give it, get it to to Mike and Chris, oh, and then nice. you guys can That's circulate right. that ahead of our, our next meeting in time so that people yeah, can have a chance list. to yeah. think about it. And, and just the only other thing is, um, I think the first step we ought to decide what exactly, what's our goal, what do we want this committee to do, what are the skills needed 
um, to ask these people to come in. I think as a board, that probably should be the first step. Yep. Um, what is it this board is going to do? What are the skills that are necessary? And I think that will help us to be able to look around the community and see who is out there that could best serve. Mm -hmm. um, what are we looking at as far as um, uh, timeline for appointing members? What are, what are your guys' thoughts on that? When, when should we make final decisions and stuff on committee members? I guess my, my feeling is that I'd like to get it going as soon as we can because I think that uh, the, the, the less time that it sits idle, the better. Um, so that we're having uh, next a week from tonight, we're having the uh, State Hospital Advisory Committee come in yeah. and, and talk to us. I'm hoping that we'll get some, maybe we'll have a discussion that night about the sorts of skills mm -hmm. that we might be looking for from the uh, people to serve on that committee. So that might be a good time to try to formalize that part mm -hmm. of it in, okay. in terms of a skill set of, of uh, individuals yeah. and then maybe in at our next meeting after that we could look at making some appointments maybe or I think it might be nice uh, before everybody breaks for summer to at least have a good idea where we're going and um, a committee ready to go yeah well, I'm hoping and, and they could meet the over the summer as yeah. well but uh, hopefully uh, you know if somebody's away they can can continue to meet and then in September you'd have the full board yeah the next item is an update on the main south sidewalk. I have some information. I don't know if Christine uh, has some on that. Um, the uh, town is working this week and next week. The town should be able to pretty much finish. Um, they removed the existing sidewalk. Uh, they removed the, uh, the tree stumps uh, this past week, so they're out. Um, they actually found um, an old abandoned water pipe that went across uh, Main Street, so they actually had to remove it. They dug up part of 109 and then uh, repatched it today. Uh, they hope so by the end of next week they should be in pretty good shape. Uh, there was some delay, but it was on the part of Roach Brothers because uh, they had some water and sewer issues of getting, uh, uh, they ran into a few more complications than they thought. But our, our highway is, is ready to go. Um, so the next couple of weeks, you should see that, uh, that sidewalk actually come in. The only thing I want to add to that, and, and I'll, take, uh, I'll take responsibility. Uh, uh, we, we goofed a little bit, I think. Um, this whole issue of the sidewalk uh, was on and off uh, since the fall. Uh, at first, uh, we had to get the, uh, everybody on the DPW uh, on board because then there was a whole issue of should it be all brick, partial brick. We had debate, it was on, it was off. And then Roach Brothers had some issues and then Roach Brothers came up with the $30,000. So what happened is that while the owners of the building uh, that contains uh, Casa Bella Pizza, the barber shop and the, and the jewelry store, he was notified by letter of the work we were gonna do once that was finalized. And the jeweler uh, was notified by the town planner. Uh, we missed both the barbershop and the um, Casa Bella Pizza. And so when work began there, there was some well, concern that, yeah. uh, of loss of business and things like that. So I just want to apologize to both Casa Bella and uh, Medfield Barbershop. Uh, Bobby Kennedy went over there, fully explained uh, everything as soon as we, we realized that. Um, and they requested that a, um, uh, a sheet of ply would be laid down so that if it rains, it's not mud, and the highway got right out there. They laid the, uh, the plywood uh, down there, uh, and they were both very appreciative uh, of that. Um, but maybe uh, we need just a reminder. Uh, we adopted last year the um, good neighbor policy. Whenever a town board um, is gonna do major work in an area, that we notify the, uh, the abutters and the people in that neighborhood in advance so they know what's going on. Um, and so maybe, I don't know, Evelyn, if we can resubmit, I know you sent out last year to some boards, if we can send that out again, Park and Recreation and others, um, so that they just know, and again, I think Mark pointed out before, not just on some minor thing, but on areas that's gonna impact uh, a street or a neighborhood, if you do a major work in the parks that was gonna disrupt traffic and things like that, so people at least would know what's going on if we're going to keep that good neighbor policy. So was the uh, town board that fell down this time the Board of Selectmen? 
No, I, I think, uh, in, in fairness, it really wasn't a board. The, uh, the aesthetics and sidewalk uh, committee had kind of undertaken that. The highway department was doing some work on that. So it, it just kind of fell through the cracks. Uh, well, the other thing, the, the, the legal owner of the building was notified. He was. The, yeah. So then the, you, you just have, they have to just double up. They've got to also try to, try to remember to do both the legal owner as well as and, and the individual. Right. I think exactly. the, the issue also was the timeline was kind of a moving target as to yes, when you we didn't could know start, start that. Yeah, you didn't really right. know. It all just kind of yeah. came And together. it was on, it was off, yeah. and then um, they did notify, and then it was off. And um, I did see uh, the detail officer was escorting people uh, <laughs> over the sidewalk. For anybody who seemed a little hesitant today, he was helping them into all of the businesses. So oh, that's good. Oh, that was good. That's special service. <laughs> Uh, the next item is the status of the Jacob Cushman House. Uh, Michael and I talked about this yesterday. Um, he spoke with Montrose, and the property is on their list to be rehabbed by the school. Oh, excellent. Uh, there's no plan for demolition. Uh, their plan is to, over the next few years, use it for administration space. Oh, okay. And they said while they would love to be able to move their administration in there now, their priority is classroom space, which is what they're constructing now. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Their enrollment is uh, growing by leaps and bounds, so they said, unfortunately, Fortunately and unfortunately, their concentration is going to be on the, on the kids and having space for them. Um, they did replace some of the windows and clean it up around the outside last year. She was going to send maintenance over uh, this week or early next week to check and make sure that was all still in place. And if not, they will clean it up. And there's a couple of windows that have been out for a while that yeah. hopefully they'll replace Yeah, them. she said she, was, she wasn't aware they had replaced them last year, but she'll make sure those get replaced. Oh, so we just have to be a little patient and stuff yeah. to help they'll begin to, well, that's good. So I, I know um, I received a call today. Uh, David Temple, uh, co-chair of the um, Historical Commission, uh, was concerned and wanted to come in, but it sounds like uh, maybe it's best that he contact Mike and, mm -hmm. and get an update because it sounds like they are working towards. Yeah, she said uh, okay. at this point, absolutely no plans for demolition. They, they are going to need the space. Great. Which is good to hear. Great. Was that the uh, head of school you were talking to about it? Yes. Did she happen to say when it might be on their plans or? Uh, she did not give us a timeline. Well, probably next year, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But, you know, they have quite a large construction project going on right now, so I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. Until they get that done, this will be on yeah. the back burner. With the bike yeah. shop back. But she was very positive in talking about it. Yeah. Huh? Good. The bike shop back. Um, and then uh, we would just ask the, uh, you to know for the selectman's calendar, mm -hmm. uh, we're moving the DPW Water and Sewer and Cemetery to the meeting on June 16th. Okay. Uh, we couldn't get everybody here on June 3rd. There were some okay. prior commitments. Um, and we'll take up selectman's goals and town administrator goals at the next meeting. Yeah, with okay. Michael's back. Yeah. Good. Can you uh, circulate, um, um, Mike circulated some new goals that he had, mm -hmm. um, but could, could you just remind him to circulate his prior goals oh, sure. from last year? Yep. So we, maybe a package with the revised calendar, the ARC selectman's goals from last year and, the, and sure. Mike's goals from last year and this year. Are you looking for a copy of our goals now to give out and then we'll discuss next week? Is that your idea? Well, I, th I think that I think this is a good time for us to be doing our goals. But yeah. Well, I, I had jotted mine down. I don't know if... <laughs> okay. I hadn't you, updated mine yet, no. So do you want to take a look at mine and we can do it next week? Sure. Doing, sure. Yeah. sure. Sure. I'll try to get mine out around to you guys, yeah, so that'll be good. So I didn't, uh, I didn't write mine out on my computer. I wrote mine out by pen. Oh. Um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll go through mine and just uh, make, I'll, I'll put, do it on the computer and then I'll uh, send, send us a copy. Okay. So I'll do the same thing too. And then our next uh, appointment is uh, 745, which we are there now, uh, is with the Open Space and Recreation Planning Committee. Present results of Open Space Survey. Welcome. Rob Agler, nice of you to come. Thank you. As you all know, we're... Um, Committee is in the process of doing an update to the existing plan. Let me introduce, we have uh, Michael, uh, Michael Perloff here, uh, Tom Caragliano, uh, Jonathan Heinrichs, and we also have Jim Snyder here who's been assisting us uh, from Park and Rec Committee as well. Excellent. Our other, um, um, Eric O'Brien uh, was not, um, I, don't think I don't think he was able to no. make it tonight. So um, <coughs> what you have before you here are the actual um, Basically, the, uh, the results um, that are, uh, are capable of being put into what I call um, more of a, like a data, um, a, a data um, 
form or a form that can be man manipulated as far as um, percentages and, and mm -hmm. uh, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, those of you who uh, would have completed the actual survey, either um, or probably online in some form or, or other, will be familiar with the types of question with the questions uh, that you have there. If not, if not with the results, which if none of you has had a chance to see yet. Um, just a little bit of a background here. We um, we had distributed uh, results in a number of uh, different format, um, hard copy um, surveys, um, both through the school and at the various town office locations. Mm -hmm. uh, we also um, had um, included the survey uh, through a link on the, the um, two uh, publications, the Hometown Weekly and also the Medfield Press. And also, I don't think if we did it through the Medfield Patch, I'm not sure if we did. Uh, so we had those that are circulating as well. And, um, and then we had, a, um, we had a stuffers in the water bills that were done at the end of the last year. Um, we actually collected 680, 687 responses, which is approximately 16% of the of the estimated number of households in town, mm -hmm. which we were very pleased with from a, um, from a statistical standpoint. We sure. think that gives us a good um, a good and significant um, uh, population of responses. Um, what I've done is I've, uh, I've given you, as I mentioned, uh, the responses that are primarily in the data form. Mm -hmm. um, several of the questions um, were um, uh, solicited written responses, which are kind of difficult to uh, distribute mm -hmm. in this form. Um, if you'd like to have those, uh, those responses, which we have on file, I'd be happy to send them to you. We have 611 written responses to, f to, f um, to uh, uh, five different questions, so mm -hmm. it's quite a bit of reading, so I thought I would um, kind of not include that in the packet tonight. Um, just some very brief observations and generalizations. Mm -hmm. um, um, among the survey respondents, um, the characteristics were very, um, really represent what we expect in Medfield. 78% of the uh, total respondents had on average two children less than 18 years old. 97% mm -hmm. um, were single family homeowners. Mm -hmm. Um, and about 14% of the respondents um, noted there was at least one person uh, age 65 and older in the household, mm -hmm. which is encouraging because that tells us that it's not just families with young children who are responding, but people in the, um, in the uh, more mature and um, senior and perhaps and hopefully uh, retirement areas who are showing an interest in these subjects as well. Okay. Um, what you find in um, the, basically um, the um, responses to question number five are mm -hmm. what we did was we wanted to, um, we wanted to uh, basically uh, list what we would consider um, as many as 17 different uses for open space and also active recreation facilities. Mm -hmm. And, um, and basically see what's, uh, what people's usage of, or where people um, would go to use or to, um, to uh, engage in those activities. Um, and we also wanted to find out um, the frequency as well. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, um, there were only um, f three, three actual activities, uh, swimming, road biking, and hunting where residents felt they had to go outside the town more than 30% of the time okay. to engage yep. in those activities. Yep. Um, and another interesting uh, characteristic was that uh, only five of the total of the, um, and, we, uh, and we, as you can see, we had a total of 19 actual locations, whether they be town owned or organization owned, mm -hmm. um, where people would, would, would um, typically go to en engage in the activities. Only five of them actually had uh, high levels of use for more than one or two purposes. Um, these are these typically tended to be the um, the larger facilities: Noonhill, Wheelock School Fields, sure. uh, State Hospital, or Rocky Woods, and also Metacomet Park. Interesting. Um, Interesting. And then finally, um, and this is in, um, I believe, in uh, under um, six and seven. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I'm sorry, under uh, question number seven, um, how often do you use the parcels? Yeah. There were nine locations that I, uh, nine out of the actual 19 locations 
where there was a rather high response rate of either never use or not aware of it. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that was a theme that we saw, um, you know, in a couple of other areas in, in the yeah. survey overall. Yep. Which suggests to us, to us that there's probably an awareness and an education opportunity sure. um, that that uh, that we can um, that should be um, yep. should be addressed here. If you look at question number eight. Um, it's called rating fitness of facilities. Our basic takeaway from this was that um, so what we did was we uh, we what we did was we we listed in the 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 way the um, the way the columns work. It's a little hard to read, but you can kind of get the gist of the of the in terms of kind of abbreviations of the 17 activities. Mm -hmm. um, we found that um, overall the um, the residents seemed to be pretty satisfied with um, with the facilities and the opportunities in town. Mm -hmm. Six of the uses had a combined rating of basically either non-existent or, or needs repair or expansion. Um, and, um, and, and those percentages for each one of those was something over 25%. Mm -hmm. Those are mm -hmm. swimming, basketball, yep. road biking, I'm not sure we, how that one got in the survey, but we put it in anyway, camping, Tennis and basically um, younger children's playground activities. Sure. And I'm skipping question nine because that was basically a written response uh, mm -hmm. type of question. Question number ten. Um, <coughs> this is what I call the uh, the uh, mom an apple pie an American flag uh, question. Um, the uh, categories you see are all pretty much all qualities that are d near and dear to the hearts of almost all residents in town here. Um, not too many people would quarrel with any of these any of these uh, um, values. Mm -hmm. uh, open space. Uh, the, the top uh, rankings here were open space for water and recreation, and also open space for um, uh, water and conservation, and also for acti actually for active uh, recreation purposes. And that scored a, a, an extremely high 91%. Mm -hmm. Everything else was pretty much around 80% or higher. Sure. Um, the lowest ranking was to um, was to uh, preserve land for future municipal uses, but even that was about two thirds, sixty-eight yeah. percent. Yeah. Go over to question number eleven, um, which basically asks asked for. And this is this is this might be um, a little hard to read, but what we wanted to do was we wanted the people to rank um, to rank. The, the uses um, that have cro that shown up in several other questions, we wanted them to, to rank what they felt were the highest priorities in terms of having facilities available mm -hmm. for them. Um, and as you can, and basically what what we saw here was, um, so we had them um, we had them rank each um, each respondent was asked to rank um, five activities from a scale to, of one to five, so they could only okay. pick, pick five activities. Um, and then we kind of, and then what we took was uh, we just took a simple average, yeah. uh, based on the number of responses for each activity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we limited it to those with 100 respondents. So we figured that people who were really keen on horseback riding and hunting, if you only had say, in this case, uh, maybe 15 or 20 responses, we didn't consider that to be a, a, a big um, mm. indicator of, of town interest. Sure. Um, and the highest average priorities or the that were the, the uses that had the highest average um, priority uh, were not surprisingly, considering the our our, sam our, our our characteristics of our respondents, open field sports, yeah. Yeah. swimming. An interesting okay. one, considering that a lot of people have some problems with you know the, the Hinkley Pond area. Whatever. Indoor recreation also. Um, which is uh, kind of interesting as well, and when I would base we were we would basically kind of look at that um, as um, not just indoor sports, but other types of activities that would be found, for example, through parks and recreation committee, um, hiking, sure, um, and then basically uh, and then and then um, and then s uh, slightly behind was uh, children's playgrounds, and they were all fairly close with average average priorities of somewhere between again. Um, but they were they were all all fairly close, and I won't have to get into the statistics. But that's what we found in terms of mm -hmm. where which uses were were, fi were finding the highest priorities. Mm -hmm. And actually, each, and each one of those each one of those uh, uses had a responses of 
um, greater than 220 responses. So mm -hmm. we felt that those were um, those were certainly the more the most significant ones that mm -hmm. um, that were um, that were addressed in the survey. Questions 12 and 13 were I have them right here in front of me. I will be happy to send you the actual written responses <laughs> again. I, um, I I wanted to focus more on the, the data driven okay. responses here tonight, but I will send I will send mm -hmm. um, I'll send the actual. Um, the questions and the responses, oh, okay. uh, written responses to all the uh, committee, uh, to all the selectmen here. Thank you. So you can kind Thank of you. peruse those at your leisure. Um, Rob, have you posted this stuff online yet? Um, I, what I did was um, about two weeks ago when we, um, when we put out a notice for a listening session, uh, we included in um, the notice a link that includes um, all the data-driven responses that you see here. Mm -hmm. It has been on the Parks and Rec website um, since you provided the information. Okay, right. yeah, because I think people would be very interested in seeing this. Oh, yeah. And the, um, so the last two, uh, what I would call data-driven responses, were um, questions, uh, questions uh, 14 and 15. And I think these are, these are kind of interesting, um, certainly, um, because these, um, first of all, these are, these are, these are forward-looking, and it gives us a real, I think it gives us a real feel for, um, gives us a real feel for what people are, um, were, are prepared to do. Um, and I think it validates a lot of what we've seen over the last several years in terms of, um, in terms of how people are addressing the issues of open space um, in what I, what I would um, call our um, difficult financial times. Question 14. What steps should the town take to accomplish um, these changes? And again, I apologize. Going back to uh, questions 12 and 13, these, these asked for um, um, specific things in terms of what, where would you like, what types of facilities would you like to see improved and things of that, in that, of, in that nature. So 14 uh, asks them to it comment is, on yeah. what they put in 13 and 12 and 13, yeah, in other exactly. words. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And it's very interesting because this tells you what people are willing to pay for, basically. That's right. For example, question 12 was, what specific measures should be done in order to improve or develop um, recreational facilities? And typically, uh, when we say recreational, we're thinking more in terms of ac active recreational facilities. And question 13 um, was, identify any critical properties that should be considered for open space acquisition. So oh, those, are two, those are the two questions, 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. um, so question 14, again, um, what, ste what steps should uh, the town take? So we're looking, you know, again, we're looking now at a, at a community effort um, in answering that question. Um, the um, the f uh, five categories, um, reserve additional funds in order to acquire, reserve additional funds in order to develop, Active facilities and then and, and enact zoning um, ordinances requiring developers to set aside minimum areas or amounts of open space. Um, these what I these are what I would I would characterize as basically being um, relatively low cost options. And when and I, when I say reserve funds, what I'm say, I'm suggesting is that those funds probably would be available already, or maybe unassigned or unrestricted funds. Um, so th that's why I would, I would consider those three responses to be relatively low cost as far as the town's concerned. And those scored rather high. As you can see somewhere between 75 and 83 percent, mm -hmm. yes, and, rel and much, much lower levels of, of negative response. The other, the other two categories, borrowing to acquire open space and develop active recreation or to approve the, approve the Community Preservation Act, um, Borrowing to acquire open space, that, that only scored 59% positive, interestingly, 41% negative. And then the Community Preservation Act scored 74% high, which is an interesting uh, statistic, I thought, given that um, it's never really made it very far in town. Mm -hmm. We've had, was it one or two? It's only come up once. once. It's only yeah, come up once. once. So, but I thought that was kind of interesting, mm. especially... Before you go on, can I just, uh, yeah. the, fr the top one there, reserve additional funds in order to acquire undeveloped land and conservation restrictions. When I saw, the, when I see that, I think of the, 
the capital budget, which has basically 5,000 a year to acquire open space in it. And uh, I mean, I think that there's a suggestion every year that it'd be 50,000 and it always gets knocked down to five. That's right. And so basically we're putting no money aside to acquire open space and then we just decide on an, on an ad hoc basis as, as properties come up whether we're willing to dig in deeper. That's quite, that's and quite. That's, and I guess that's the same with the Community Preservation Act. We voted that down. Yeah. So yeah. we voted to not bank money ahead for things like that. That's take right. Take advantage of the state match. Well, yeah, that's right. And I also think that um, it's a reflection. I, I think that probably also ties into the, uh, to the need for um, maybe a little bit more uh, specific uh, long range plan. Mm-hmm. Of, you know, of which this this would be you know become a part. I know other towns, you know, they have they've specifically incorporated the open space and recreation plans as part of the long range plan master or master plan. I guess sometimes it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's one of my goals on the uh, selectman goals that we didn't talk about tonight is to add master planning to our our list of things that we should be doing this coming right. year. Right. Um, and so now question fifteen. Um, in, uh, in order to preserve open space and improve recreational facilities, would you, so we're asking each respondent, what does that person think? What would that person be willing to do? Uh -huh. um, Big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see, um, a lot of, uh, for example, so, some of these are, are, are probably not applicable to most people. Like, um, for example, uh, donate um, under undeveloped uh, land, uh, sell land at a, at a at a no discount, and then no. place a, you know, a number of people have done the, the conservation restriction. And I got but about 50. Do, do we know who this 37% are that's willing to donate the land? Do we have their names? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was a blind survey, so uh, I don't know. That's uh, But that's a good, that's a good question, because there are 300 and, 324 people or something. I, I think that's a bit. There's 37% of the people are willing to donate land to the town. I'd like to find out who they are. I know. Yeah, and the next one is 132 cost, people that are willing to sell to land to the town at a bargain price. So. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe conceptually, if they, if they had <laughs> so. Now, the, the last two categories I find very interesting. Um, contribute to, uh, contribute to a, a town fund uh, for... My, my, my printing's small here. Could it be to a town fund? Limited uh, to the acquisition of open space right. or indoor, outdoor recreation facilities. Exactly. 76%, yes. And uh, the fifth uh, the, the fifth category, uh, vote for open space um, acquisition or acquisition. Financed acquisition. by borrowing. Right, financed by, I'm sorry, mine, mine's a, sm a small type, uh, financed by borrowing. Um, that one got 70%, not surprisingly. If you think about the Redgate Farm vote, yeah. Yeah. if you think about the Medfield State Hospital, um, you know, the special election and the meeting when it comes mm -hmm. to that. Um, so uh, it's interesting. Um, so you, uh, some of these are, for example, donating un unused land or, or placing a conservation restriction, that can be relatively low cost to a person. but. Contributing to a uh, contributing to contributing money personally or voting for um, open space and recreation financed by borrowing that hits everybody that hits everybody in the wallet, yeah. um, which is kind of interesting because um, you had uh, you had pretty high rates of uh, of approval there, um, so it's and that I think that's that's kind of borne out by the you know by our experience in sure. terms of you know where where um, um, Votes have come up for uh, acquiring space. For the most part, they've uh, you know there's been success in putting those through. Um, and then finally, at the end, um, um, what we wanted, what I wanted to do was um, basically just put um, put a, put in front of everybody some specific, basically what I call specific measures, and these are um, these are. Um, Hopes, objectives, um, and that 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 got, a, that got a lot of mentions in the um, in the um, written responses to the, the other questions that I've, I've mentioned. Um, uh, most of these will not come as any any surprise. Swim facility, acquire open house, hosp, open, acquire state hospital property. Well, 
right now the town can't do much more than it's already done. Yeah. Um, You'll see that there there are several references to um, trails. Mm. Trails comes up in a lot of these responses. Mm. Um, and you see um, developing map signs and online information. Again, this is, this is where the education um, need arises. Sure. Uh, people, people, I think, the more people who know about it, the more people are going to use it. Um, it just, I think it just, um, it just stands to reason. I, I, I think this, that came up uh, on the debate on the Redgate Farm that a lot of people, because when we talked about Redgate Farm, we also talked about other properties, and people said, I didn't even know we had that property. Um, I know Alex Stevenson has been some other um, town residents that uh, really have been trying to push this to get the maps, the signs. I think you mentioned on uh, Jade Walk and others, you know, there's, there's access, but the average person doesn't know they're there. I, I think that's key. That, uh, that's excellent, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, interestingly, then, um, I saw camping sites was mentioned quite a bit. Yeah. Expand children's playgrounds. Again, that's, you know, that was there as one of the, one of the high priorities, one of the five highest priorities. Construct, and then you have construct multi-use indoor recreation facility. Um, well, we know now that uh, the town has uh, voted to give the Board of Selectmen the authority to negotiate um, up at Ice House Road, I think Ice it is. Road. Yeah. A parcel. Lot so, three. you know. Again, it's um, you know that that is very much in keeping with um, people's desire for you know for um, for more opportunities um, you know indoor as well as outdoor uh, active recreation. Um, and then one thing that um, oh and, and including included in um, recreation facility for children's activities, um, that this. Um, the sense of that was that um, it wouldn't just be sports, but again, it would be other activities under Parks and Recreation, for example. Yeah. You know, um, can, I, can, can I just add the, uh, and, and we actually, when I was in the British Club back in the 80s, we tried this um, to try to get the trustees of reservation at Rocky Woods mm -hmm. um, to get some camping sites up there, some limited camping sites that would be for midfield residents and stuff. Um, and, and they kind of shot away from that. But it'd be great if we could get a working relations with Rocky Woods to get them to play a more active uh, part. Um, because I, I think some limited camping sites uh, would go over tremendous in this town. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a very large number of uh, kids 18 and under. And for a parent to take the kids out, you know, camping right here in the town um, would just be, um, yeah. you know, uh, so I, I'm glad to see that. Yeah, OK. Um, Again, these were these were um, these were uh, frequent, excuse me, frequent frequent responses that came up, um, and definitely worth you know worth a, uh, a mention here. Um, so that's um, that's you know kind of what we found out here. Uh, I don't think there's um, I didn't see that there were a lot of surprises, especially when it came to priorities and it, when it came to specific measures. Um, and I think. Um, I think that uh, I think in a number of ways that you know the town is 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 uh, is definitely um, on the right have, is on the right track between the state hospital, um, the ability to negotiate um, uh, for um, for a, a, a privately developed facility over at um, Ice House Road, um, and then the um, I think the uh, the focus on education trails um, and things of that nature. Um, we met with when we went, met with Mike Sullivan um, about a, a week ago. Um, he mentioned something that, um, in 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 light of you know, in in light of the the, the needs that are going to be coming to, on the town, um, you know the the garage, um, the uh, water tower, the public safety building, the state hospital. What we're going to be doing with that. Um, he mentioned um, what he, he, he considered to be, I think I've, I think I've, I've got this right, um, the, the need maybe for um, uh, maybe um, in, uh, increased or um, improved management, expanded management of a lot of the parcels and everything else that we have already, as opposed to maybe just you know, continuing to, to, try and, uh, try and, to try and acquire um, parcels. And this is primarily in the open space area that I'm, think, I'm, I'm speaking of as they come up. So that was uh, one, of, one, of Mike's, um, one of Mike's comments that mm -hmm. during our meeting, along with several others, a lot of which were kind of echoed in terms of what you see here for the, um, 
for the specific measures. Good. That's really a lot of stuff to look at. This is fabulous. This is really Where do you see the responses, the written responses? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who does uh, manage the town's open lands now? I suppose it depends on which lands it is. So it it's is, conservation yeah. land. That's a good point. The Conservation yeah. Commission yeah. manages those, Leslie. Park and Rec. Park and Rec. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Park and Rec has yeah. lands. Schools have yeah. lands. Sounds yeah. have lands. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. It just, it just, it just in terms of the town lands too, and then you've yeah. got all the you've got the huge, huge ownerships of like TTOR and things of that yeah. nature. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Major, exactly. major. I uh, just wanted to mention we do have a, a map here too, Medfield Open Space and GIS uh, color coded. With you know basically fabulous, you know, really just about good. every um, you know characteristic that you would be looking for. So if you want to take some time to look at that, can you identify those? Jim, those since parcels. since Wesley, I'm I'm assuming is focusing the TV camera in on that map now. Maybe could you just go through the what the different colors represent for the people at home so they can understand it? The legend you know has you know roughly you know 20 or so different uh, characteristics on there, but um, land managed by conservation yellow. Uh, federally owned land, DCR land. Um, Can you maybe just tell land. what the colors are as you go down the list so that sure. people don't know? Uh, yellow is land uh, managed by conservation. Uh, blue is federal. Uh, dark green is DCR, state and parks and recreation. Um, there's sort of three tones of green here. DCR property, uh, Department of Fish and Game, and um, urban parks and recreation. Uh, there's Can you maybe uh, just point out a, D a DCR one? Uh, up here in the corner okay. near the state hospital area. Um, you know, that's primarily the one, where the Jim, DCR property is. Is the one below that a, the dark green? Um, that one? Yeah, all these in here yeah, are all around North Meadows Road. Is, is that one DCR as well? It is. Okay. Uh, I'm one just looking for across the room, so I can't tell. Uh, Some owned by Urban Parks and Recreation, some owned by the Water Supply Protection, some owned by Fish and Game. So, yeah, basically this is all the green area up in here. Um, tan is owned by uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, this uh, kind of a pink is municipal. Um, purple is public nonprofit. Uh, light purple is land trust. Um, so, you know, there is a, a bunch of categories here. Perhaps we can get this online maybe as well so people mm -hmm. could okay. see the PDF and really get a sense of Absolutely. all the different parcels that the town, you know, does work with. Thank you, Jim, for going through that. Sure. We had, excuse me, Tom Cragliano. Uh, first off, uh, good evening, Medfield residents and the like. We want to thank you for participating in this survey. Definitely thank you. Thank you for uh, participating in the survey. For us to get 16% is, is, is excellent. Uh, number two, I want to thank all the members of the board and Bob and the like. I saw some of the surveys, thanks to Leslie, of other towns. And nothing was as open as this one for the residents to participate in. They were more specific, whereas here we were trying to have the town speak for themselves. And I, I think what you see here, it definitely does that. And so I want, and also Jonathan had made a mis, uh, recommendation, and, and Mike, that instead of having all those colors, we try and simplify it to maybe four or five colors in that regard so that they'll be disciplined by what's DCR, what's federal, what's town. And then we also ch chatted about the fact that when you alluded to it before, people didn't know how to get there or where these were. And other, some towns do have booklets of this nature. So we're thinking that somewhere along the line as we go forward and we submit this to the state, this whole compendium as we go, uh, we'll end up with some form of uh, a town map for each and every residence going forward. Uh, but all in all, I want to say thank you, board members. We still got a lot of work to do, but thank you. It's been fun with you all and uh, very professional. And we're very fortunate in this town to have this kind of a board together. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Mr. Massaro? Yeah, I, I would, I'd just like to point out that uh, this, this map is very similar to what I had suggested at the last uh, selectman's meeting regarding uh, B. getting the acreage uh, for uh, what, what land is available for development, what land is not available for development, and coming up with the percentages of land. Pete, you and I have talked about this, about this before. Yeah. If we could get square footage to match those colors, 
I think you're pretty much there at getting the, uh, being able to calculate the uh, percentage of town land that, that you know, might be sent for uh, affordable housing. I would think that, that those numbers should be in the computer for uh, when you pull that map up. Mm -hmm. I would think that you could just pull them right off. They're linked to it. I beg your pardon? It's linked to it. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody, perhaps Sarah or somebody, if she could, you know, perhaps get working on that, that would, that would also help your master plan effort as well. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. We'd like to add it for the compendium that we submit to the state. Any other uh, questions, comments? No, it's really no I, I think this is fascinating uh, to look at. Um, and I think, um, it, it, as you pointed out, just the, the 5,000, I think originally we used to put aside 50,000, and because of budgets, it's been down to five. The, I mean, there's evidence here that there's strong support for that, the Community Preservation Act and others. Um, that way you can go to the, uh, the Warren Committee and go to others and say, you know, look at the, you know, the statistics here. Yeah. Did we, uh, do we know the age of the people? Was that asked? on the uh, survey yeah um well the in the, the database includes um the ages of everyone who who, who um what it says is how many people of of each age category are in are in your household so we okay. have those data but okay. what i did was i basically just simplified it to say that you know you know, um, school age children in this percentage and this percentage of 65 and over mm -hmm. and that sort of thing the database is there but i just didn't feel it was yeah. I think this is very helpful. This is great. I think that's excellent. Good. So am I reading this right then, Rob, the, that the, uh, the responses covered about 2,500 people in town because of the households and the number of people that lived in the households? Yeah, I... Um, I'm looking at, at your question one, and it looks like it's got a total number that comes out to around 2,500 there from the 680... Uh, that's, yeah, that's that's quite possible. I mean, if, um, 687, 2,500, that's somewhere almost, it's a little less than four person per people per household, right? Mm -hmm. And 87%, 87% um, reported that they had um, at least two children. Mm -hmm. And almost every one of those households is going to be, you know, uh, two, two parents. Sure. So, yeah. That's a big sample of our town, then. Yeah, pretty good size. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, any more questions, Thank you, Mark? Well said. Yeah. There's a lot of data. This is great. There is, yeah. That is really good. Thank you for doing that. Thanks so much. Thank you. And thanks for coming in and uh, reporting on it. Sure. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we can also uh, follow up on your suggestions uh, as well. Rocky Woods did attend our meetings and, and talked about these things. So did the Bay Circuit Trails and things like that. Did Rocky Woods actually say they were willing to do anything? We didn't have that. We didn't have you there to ask. <laughs> <laughs> it was the trustees as opposed to uh, Oh, okay. Woods, okay. Mr. McLeod was there. And a couple of them. But it was interesting the people that had come during the course of all these meetings leading up to before this one out. State Hospital status update. The State Hospital Advisory Committee will be attending the selectmen's meeting next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, selectman reports. Uh, Mr. Fisher. Uh, so I've been out of town for most of the last couple of weeks. Had a couple of college graduations. So Congratulations. Been kind of flying around all the that? place, huh? That's yeah. fun, huh? So it's fine. So it's been good, yeah. They throw so. their hats? Um, no, which is good because then they never get them back. Yeah. I mean, a few kids did, but like I said, the smart ones I don't did not. So that was good. So um, yeah, so it was fun. It was great. Obviously, we went down to Tennessee for Matthews, and then um, just down to Rhode Island for Caitlin. So it was a good, good couple of weeks, which was which was really good. And I did manage to squeeze in to see uh, Fiddle on the Roof on Mother's Day, Woodland Theater. So I'll do my my plug for uh, for them once again. A, a terrific performance and. Uh, a, a great musical, obviously, with a lot of the songs and stuff that everyone recognizes. So they continue to do a wonderful job with their uh, with their presentations. And what a nice thing that is for us to have in town. Yeah, very lucky, very lucky. Yeah, it's just it's really, really quite a quite a good um, quite a good high caliber, you know, obviously group and stuff. 
And um, oh, and then just a plug, my wife wanted to remind me, you know, this is, continues to be May is Midfield Green Month. So, um, so they've still can you do a lot of different things that are going on. So please check the, the papers and stuff um, for the different activities. Uh, you know, any Saturday and weekend and stuff. My favorite hazardous waste day is coming up on the 31st. Oh, there we go. I knew that was oil. coming. Yeah. And I think um, I think Dover does it with us too, right? Yeah, and they've done that in the past, right, Joy? Yeah, because yeah. driving through Dover in the morning, I saw a little sign up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Advertising our stuff. Uh, advertising our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Man. So that's good. I mean, that's great. That's best. No, I think that's great. I mean, that's good that it works out. So, um, so that's it for me. That's it for me. All right. Thank you so much. Mr. Sorga. Uh, a couple of things. I, I took part in the uh, library vision session, which dealt with the future of uh, Medfield Public Library. What, what does the library need? What is it going to be like five years from now? Uh, they're doing a nice job uh, with that. They're going to have a series of uh, sessions. So I found that uh, very interesting. <clears throat> I attended the uh, Dover, uh, Town of Dover Planning Board hearing when they discussed the proposed cell tower uh, in Dover, but along the backyards of the, the homes along uh, Evergreen Way. Uh, what I, I thought was um, a, something very good, at least a good sign, is that one of the members of the Dover Sherbin uh, Regional School Committee was there, and they had a, he expressed that there was, uh, he felt, a great deal of interest of having that tower be located on the campus of Dover Sherbin High School. And he was going back uh, to the uh, the school committee, and in the meantime, the um, uh, the proposed developer of the um, the cell tower agreed to uh, delay for 45 days to give Dover Sherbin uh, School Committee time to um, officially come back to them. So I thought that was positive. Uh, I also brought up, which I believe Pete, you also did at the uh, the ZBA, that the town of Midfield is also putting up uh, a water tower on that property. Um, a question was raised: um, Would it be to our advantage? I know I realize the water tower is not up and won't be up uh, probably until 2015. Um, but should Medfield issue a, an RFP uh, for our water tower uh, just to get uh, the ball rolling on that so that they know that uh, Medfield uh, also has some interest in that? I, I, I would be in favor of doing that. I know that from talking to uh, 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 Dave Maxim at the uh, ZBA hearing that I was at over in Dover, Bob told me that uh, under the regulations that you the, – the, under the regulations that the way to derail the, the cell tower in Dover that was being proposed was to show that there was a, a, another alternative that was reasonable. And the Medfield cell tower is reasonable except for its timing because it's a year off. Um, but he said that there are these companies that will bring in and put up on, on it, they'll bring in on a truck and put up a temporary cell tower and so that realistically the Medfield water tower could be a reasonable alternative to the Dover one. And so that I, I think that we should explore that and try to capture that. How does that start? Who, who puts the RFP up? The Radio Tower Study Committee, uh, and Dave is the is the chairman of that. We can have a conversation with him. The issue about putting out an RFP for the water tower is that bids are only good for a certain number of days, so it's too soon to do an official RFP for that. Um, but if you know Dave's aware of a company that's willing to come in, we can have a conversation about that. And, um, I know that Dave's been meeting with Mike almost on a bi-weekly basis to discuss it, so. That's good. So good. Can, can we pursue that avenue to see? That's a good idea. Um, but there were a number, 20, 25 residents of uh, Evergreen Road uh, away that were there. Um, I also attended, uh, actually this morning, the uh, DPW Garage uh, weekly meeting, and then um, had a tour through the facility. Uh, wow, they've really come along. Good, huh? uh, it's impressive, you know, to, to walk through, um, uh, and they're, pretty much on schedule uh, that it will be finished uh, by the end of August. The only glitch they've run into um, is they've, they hit some uh, unexpected groundwater uh, that they uh, might have set them back for a week or two. They've, they've <coughs> since fixed that, but they're pretty much on schedule with that facility. Um, and it's, it's just impressive. That. They call it dewatering, don't they? Is that what it is? I don't know. Uh, but I love that term. It's, uh, it's been a long haul, uh, and, and uh, it, it, 
it's on schedule. Uh, it, it looks great. Uh, so that, that was impressive. Um, just a couple of things I want to bring up in my walks that I do there. Um, if maybe you can mention to uh, Ken, outside of zebras on North Street, uh, it looks like something was dug up uh, on the cement sidewalk. But instead of putting the cement sidewalk back in, there's, there's this uh, probably five foot by four foot tar section, uh, which just looks very odd. Uh, is there a way we can put the cement back in so that that area, which is all cement, uh, remains cement? And there's also uh, two signs um, across the street from Zebras uh, in front of First Parish that are literally face to face, uh, so you cannot see the second sign. It's impossible to see it. Uh, either that second sign is no longer needed or it needs to be moved, but you cannot unless you actually get down on all fours and look up. Uh, uh, that needs to be corrected. That's there. Um, a couple of things that we put on are pending, maybe for next week or the, the meeting after that. Just the update on the Park Street sign possibility of where we are with that. We actually, I can give you just a quick update. Oh, good. Um, we have the layouts of the road, and John Naff and I and Sarah have been going over to try and figure out where we're going to work that out. But Ken was able to get the layout um, where the bank is and where APC Pest Control is, so we can look and see where the actual town layout is to see if there's any opportunity for the town to do something. Uh, you haven't gone that far. I was going to say, do, do we know we if there is the any? We have the layouts this week. Okay. We, we just haven't had the next step yet. Actual town, but we actually have much land right. the town owns. Yeah. But we, uh, we did pull the layouts for it. And then I just want to let you know, uh, I'm actually working at the Kennedy Library on June 4th. And I really wanted to go to that Tree City ceremony. I'm not going to be able to. Okay. I don't know if either Mark or Pete, I know it's during the day, but. It's a really long ceremony. It's 9 to 3. I'll pass. <laughs> I'll, I'll be attending, but it's it's nice interesting six-hour ceremony. Have a great time. Where is that? That's in Andover? Andover. Oh, yeah, no. Thank you. I can't make that. Um, I, I wanted to go to that, but I'm not going to be able to. And then just an update. Um, where are we with the Harding Farm Street letter to the MBTA? Are we still on that? I'll have to check with Michael. I didn't, okay. I didn't touch base with him about that. The, the police chief has had the... Uh, radar machine up at the uh, Harding Street Railroad tracks. I, I think he's trying to get data on uh, how fast people are going there. I don't think there's a speed problem there at all if you take the tracks out myself. Because people are coming, going towards town, there, there are a series of S turns that keep the speed down so that when you hit the railroad tracks you're not going fast at all. You would you'd be going faster going the other way because the speed limit is 40 miles an hour uh, up until the railroad tracks more or less. Um, but then, you know, you're going to slow down because of those curves anyway. You know, it was my understanding the chief was going to put, because um, he came before this board, a stop sign on West Mill Street coming into Harding Street. But as I look at that, that would be very difficult to do because the grass area uh, sets back quite a ways. And you would almost stop uh, uh, six, seven, eight yards before you even get to the intersection. There's no stop sign there now. Uh, and I didn't know, because he came, I think we gave him permission to put such a sign there. But as I, I sat there trying to just watch the traffic the other day, and I'm trying to think, of where would you put a stop sign? Because you have to put it way back. Way and then if the somebody way. stopped there, you wouldn't be able to see who's coming down Harding Street. It's a very wide intersection. Or you'd have to have the stop sign literally in the street. And I don't think you would want to do that. I'll, it, I'll check it, it's it's just an odd setup with that. Um, can we also, um, and they gave me their word uh, they were going to do it first thing in the spring, Columbia Gas Company was going to pave Adam Street. Can we just check with them where they are in their schedule on that? Yeah, it's really, it's really sunk. Oh, they, yeah. Uh, the trench is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and they had guaranteed, we met uh, back in uh, January, that first thing in the spring uh, they would be out um, towering that. I think Columbia Gas is actually the one responsible for the tar section in front of Zebras as well, so I'll, I'll follow up with both of them. Oh, because they're putting the gas in? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll check with them on both of those. Okay, thank you. And also, uh, I had a call um, on June 3rd, um, and everyone I believe is going to put it on our uh, agenda, uh, Pat Canelli. Um, who's very friendly with uh, Jack Peterson, and he spoke at uh, the ceremony uh, down at uh, Baxter Park uh, 
dealing with uh, the Merchant Marines when we dedicated the, uh, the frag pole um, uh, that was down there. Um, he has a, uh, a poem he wrote uh, dedicated to our police and fire uh, personnel, and he wants to present them uh, to Chief Meany and Chief Kingsbury. So they're going to, um, he's going to come in on June 3rd on the agenda on that. Um, and I believe that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. I would uh, mention that I went to the uh, Midfield Cares About Prevention meeting. They're going to be doing a bunch of parent coffees uh, starting in the fall. Um, so look for those to be coming. Um, they're doing some videos too, and, and those are going to get filmed and, and put out on social media. You can uh, f be part of their connection through their Facebook page or I think they've got a Twitter account too, but I'm not positive. Um, the other thing that I noticed that I thought was interesting was that uh, from the Metro West Adolescent Health Survey and, and other sources that anxiety is in, in the school children, K to 12, is listed as a, as a, a really uh, a major, major issue. Um, um, and they th there was a suggestion uh, made that uh, the, the uh, Midfield Cares About Prevention effort should be really getting out to the elementary school parents. So I think that'll happen in the future that they'll look to getting down to the, the, the kids in the younger grades, uh, especially with the anxiety issues. Uh, I, I went to the library uh, a strategic planning session that you went to and, and I was very, I'm, I'm, everything the library does impresses me, but it was very impressive how organized they were and uh, the discussion, the guiding of the discussions um, and the ideas that came from the people that were, well, there were like yeah. 30 people maybe yeah. or something. It was yeah. just, it was very exciting, the, the, the ideas of what the library could be. And, uh, and I especially like Tony Centauri's idea of opening up the doors of the library. I also envisioned the library as, mm -hmm. as including the Zulu Gallery and the town hall and being this bigger thing than just the, the library building itself. I don't know exactly how that happens, but. I like the idea of the cafe with food, drink. I, I thought that was good. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and I mean, there were, there's times when I've been in the library uh, last summer when, uh, when it was a rain uh, a night on Thursday night and, and the memo concert mm -hmm. was going on in the library and that was really cool. <laughs> it was really, yeah, I mean, it was loud, it was fun. Um, Medfield Foundation uh, met uh, and, and we met with uh, Pastor Phil uh, Bauman from the, the uh, UCC Church and uh, Don Alcott from uh, Medfield Youth Outreach to hear about the, uh, the, the need in town the, uh, the angel run monies go to a fund that is administered by the UCC church and uh, for Medfield families in need. And so we were getting a report back as to what the status of that was. And it was actually interesting because there was, uh, um, there's still a lots of need, but uh, the, the, the need is, is, there's not as much of a need, I guess, for as much money to solve the people's problems. So that's, that was encouraging to hear. Um, I actually, out of curiosity, went to the Neponset Valley Chamber of Commerce event that they had for the uh, uh, legislators, and, and, and I guess it was for us as selectmen too, over at the Endicott Estate. I always get confused with the MIT Endicott House in Dedham. Um, but this was at the Endicott Estate, the one that was uh, mm -hmm. slated to become the governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. I had never been there, so I was curious to see that place too. Mm -hmm. Turned out to be pretty nice inside, a little worn down around the edges. Um, and I ended up meeting uh, somebody from Medfield, so that was fun. And, and he introduced me, uh, uh, Cliff Monak, uh, he, and he introduced me around to the people from the, the Neponset Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, were, were our representatives there? No. Okay. No. The only representatives were John Rogers, and, uh, and there was one other one whose okay. name I didn't, didn't know, didn't remember. Um, the Lyme Disease Committee met last night, and uh, they're, they're gearing up for the hunt, uh, which uh, uh, the hunting season is uh, October 20 through December 31. Things are going to pretty much be the same. They're going to do a little more posting this year. Um, they're changing some of their signs because uh, they had a sign that said something like, uh, well, they're, they're gonna, the signs are now going to say that you can't hunt unless you're permitted, uh, unless you're permitted by the town, basically. Um, you, you can add me to, I, I just was tested positive last week with Lyme disease and oh no. two more ticks. Oh no. It's year number four in a row here. 
That's what I was, I was asking last night about that, whether the incidence of Lyme has, mm. uh, has gone up or down in the town. I mean, it's just, it seems incredibly high. And I, so anything that we can do to, to get the rates down, I think is really important. Uh, I know my, my neighbor's son was in, uh, in uh, Children's for, for a week, mm -hmm. like three yeah. years ago or something. Yep. That's what got yeah. me interested in, in getting going on this. Um, there, uh, there was actually a discussion about spraying for ticks at the schools, especially at the Wheelock soccer fields, because mm. apparently that's a, a big problem area. I didn't have problems with it when I was a soccer coach and down there all the time, but they, but they say that that's a, a big problem area, and uh, they were going to reach out to the superintendent and see about uh, whether spraying is going to happen. It apparently has been sprayed in the past at the schools, but for some reason they're not, they didn't put money in the budget this year to spray or something. I don't know. Um, and I'm going to reach out to the legislators to see if we can get the uh, the 500-foot uh, ring around houses and mm -hmm. reduce to 150 feet. Mm -hmm. Yep, for as, hunting. As, uh, um, the bow uh, hunting on the deer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, as Barry Mandel pointed out, the, the uh, distance that you have to be back from a public way is only 150 feet for either a gun or, or, a, or, or a, bow. a bow. Yeah. So that, I mean, the states basically said that it's okay, even with a gun, yep. to be 150 feet. So it, it makes sense uh, to have it be 150 feet. And when you see the, the, the f when you put the 500 foot circles around residences, it just, it, it makes so much of the space, town yeah. un unavailable for hunting. Um, and let's see, what else? Uh, the other thing that I did was I met with that fellow that emailed all of us, Bob Hertz Zuber, whose name I, I, I'm sorry, probably can't pronounce correctly. Um, but he had, uh, um, he, after he had emailed the three of us, I, I met with him and, uh, and we talked about communication and, and information issues in town. And, and he's, he's a, an IT person at Boston College and he's got this system for the arts issues at Boston College where the students can, uh, 5,500 students can mm -hmm. act. As, there's a portal that he's created that where they can get all of their information about those things and all those people can post to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and so right after I met with him, there was an email that came from Bob Lutman actually uh, to, a, to a number of people. I think you were on that email actually. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I sent that email along to, to Bob Hertz Zuber and I said, you know, here's something that sounds like what you were talking about. Maybe you should. Mm -hmm. So he did. He inserted himself into that conversation, and uh, as a result of that, we actually had a meeting last uh, week at the library, and there were four of us that, that came, and uh, and so it's that idea is moving along. We'll see where it goes, um, but it was interesting. It's very interesting. It's using technology to get information out. Although his, his information, he seems to be focused on like calendar things at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of information like inside the townhouse of like these reports that we just got handed tonight that mm -hmm. would be good to somehow mm -hmm. have a system that pushes those out to people. I think it has to be a push system where, where people just say what they're interested in and then, and then an email shows up in their mailbox and they can open it or not whether they want to read mm -hmm. the, the information from the open space uh, recreation. Mm -hmm. What was the outcome of your meeting uh, with the four of you? Uh, we got thrown out of the library and they closed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we didn't actually, because of that, we didn't agree on a an, on an next meeting time. So it just okay. got kind of, I mean, I think people were very interested. Um, and uh, it, there was, uh, uh, Russ Hallisey was there and mm -hmm. Bob Villa, who's uh, an IT sort of person who had a, I mean, he, he thought of it in ways that just didn't occur to me because he's, I guess he runs uh, digital stuff for, uh, for like ESPN or something like that, or some mm -hmm. sports TV thing, um, but I think it's gonna I think it's gonna keep going forward because I, I know that Bob is very interested in it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that was it. So, uh, informational things, Chris. I just have a couple of things. One came in this evening, so it's not on the agenda. Um, there's a meeting on Thursday at 11 o'clock at Rocky Woods between the trustees and the Norfolk County Mosquito Control. Oh, oh they're actually meeting. Great. Yeah. We tried to have it here, but it has to be at the trustees' property, which is fine. Um, they've asked for one of the members of the Board of Selectmen to attend, if possible. 
Good. So let me know if any of you can do it. I know Mike okay. is planning on attending, but if any of you can attend, that would be great. Thursday at 11? Thursday at 11. And my understanding from the email that went out that uh, this decision by the trustees is statewide. It's a, it's a statewide policy, um, and they don't appear to be willing to change it on a case-by-case -case basis. So and is the person meeting at Rocky Woods from the hierarchy of the trustees, or is it a local? No, I believe it's, it's the upper. Oh, good. Management. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and the only other thing uh, that I would uh, draw your attention to is Mark Sorella has a memo in there regarding his meeting with department heads um, related to town bylaws, and then he'll be setting up his workshop, but just his information that he gathered from, okay. from the department heads. Right. Can, can someone circulate a copy of that to us electronically so we can all have it? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and that was it. Mr. Chairman, can I just make, uh, let the people know that uh, this Saturday, uh, May 25th at 10 a.m., uh, the Community Study Memorials will officially dedicate a square at Snyder Road and at Lee Road. The Snyder dedication um, and the Lee dedication will both be at the uh, Stagecoach Road and where the, where the two streets come together. Mm -hmm. um, Snyder, of course, uh, was killed in... Um, uh, Judge Snyder was killed in the Korean War. Earl Lee was killed in uh, in World War II, um, and all the all the streets and squares that have been dedicated in the past. Right now, is just the the sign, the wooden sign with the small blue plaque. They're all being replaced. All the signs are in, um, and they will look the same as the Bob Norton um, sign down on. Um, uh, off of Causeway Street. So if anybody um, would like to, uh, uh, we have a nice little program. Uh, the American Legion's uh, taking part, the Boy Scouts, um, um, and that will be 10 a.m. Saturday, May 25th, down at the intersection of Lee and Snyder Roads on the uh, stagecoach side. Good. Excellent. Thank you. And I think we're, we're done. This program was made possible through the generous support of your Medfield friends and neighbors, folks just like you. And thanks for watching.